All right, I'm gonna make another little mini box video here. The first couple of videos we played with some uh, settings in the notes, note sequences, and uh, thought I'd just show you a couple of things I like to play with. With uh, that can be done with some of those things we've already talked about. Um, I'm gonna just use one four track sequence. And we're going to go to the very first one. I'm going to hold down Menu and Event. And I'm going to set it for a 64 step event or 64 step sequence. I've got it on output number one, which is MIDI, and channel number seven, which is uh, my Ambika. And I'm going to hit the init, hold it for two seconds. And that's initialized. Track number two, I'm going to set it for a note 64 steps. I'm going to set the port to bus one, and we'll talk about, we'll get back to that in a minute. And channel one, which doesn't matter when you're on the bus, and init that, hold it for two seconds, and that's initialized. And I'm going to, I'm not going to use track number three, but I'm going to down to number four, and we're going to set this. To output number one, the MIDI output, I'm going to have it on channel eight, which is this mono one voice of the Ambika played with a bass patch on it. And I'm going to init that. Okay. And on the mutes, I'm going to mute everything. Except for track four right now. And like usual, track four starts out with uh, with C3 notes on every step. I'm going to change them to um, an E1. Turn that one off. Turn that one off. Set this one to... Set them all to E1. And let's see how it sounds. I got the 808 playing some basic drums. And we'll bring up that bass note. And like we've done before, I'm going to hit the parameter C so I can change the length. Make the first note longer. Make the other three notes a little shorter. And maybe go back to parameter layer A and bring this. Up to an E2. Okay, nothing new there. Just plain old step sequencer playing the bass notes. Now in uh Go to mute and let's unmute track one and go to track one. Of course, it starts out with the C's on every note as well. I'm going to change the first note to an E2. Then I'm going to hold down the All button and, whoops, sorry. Hold on. Turn on all the notes first. There. Turn them all on. Then hold the all button down and go up and down and change them all to E2s. So i got an E2 on every step. And if we play it... Okay. With a little bit of echo on it. Um, okay, so that's the first note. I'm going to go to parameter C button and I'm going to go to the second note. Remember we could have a whole bunch of notes on each step. They all play at the same time. And on this one I'm going to hold down the all button. And I'm going to make this uh, what are we getting there? Hold on.
I'm going to have them all be a B2, a fifth above my first note. There we go. Oh, this one's not. Sometimes the all button doesn't do what I think it's going to do, but there we go. Okay, so those are all B2s. That's my first, sec first secondary note. Next secondary note, I'm going to go up to a G. Let's see, a G3. Change them all to G3s. See what they sound like. You should have three notes playing there. And we can do this while it's playing. Now let's go to the next note available. We've got a G3. I want to go a fifth above that. So that's going to be a... A D4. And then we're going to put a, one more note above that. So I'll go to my next note available. And all and make this... An F sharp above that. So we've got a nice... Uh, fifth on the bottom over a fifth above that on the top with a sharp on top. Nice little chord. And we turn off the drums and the bass. We can just hear our uh, our 16th notes playing. Now I'm going to go back to the main edit screen and And the hall button was on. Yeah, gotta watch when you hit the all button, it stays on and I forget to turn it off. Okay, so there's a chord on every 16th note, the same chord, and I just turned off all the gates except for the first one, so now I'm gonna put some patterns in. Strum back into here. And you can uh, turn gates off. Find a nice pattern you like. Like that. Bring our bass back in. Take notes out. Okay, so that's kind of a nice, nice little thing going. Now, the chords, of course, are getting a little monotonous if they're the same over and over and over. So in track number two, um, we configured this, and it's on bus one. Instead of going to a MIDI output, its output is going to bus one. And I'm going to turn off all but that C3 note. And that's kind of like the MIDI middle note, which doesn't transpose anything if you're using it as a transposer, which is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to unmute this track two that we're playing with. Remember, track four is the bass, track one is those chords with their gated patterns, and number two is the one we're playing with now. It's going out on bus one, and it's just a plain old C. And if we go back to track one, which has the uh, chords on it, I'm going to go menu and mode, and I'm going to say, instead of this being normal, this is going to be a transposed track. And it's being transposed by bus number one. So it will listen on bus number one for transposition notes. And right now it's all it's going to get is that C3, which doesn't transpose it at all. So we'll go back to the notes. There's our, our chords, and we're going to go back to track two which has our transposition on it and play a little bit here <laughs> 
Now if I transpose the C3 up a couple steps, and back down to the C, and I can also put a transposition somewhere else in the in the pattern, maybe over here. It'll stay on that transposition until it's changed to something else. C3 is going to put it up a half step. A B2 take it down a step. An A sharp will take it down a whole step, of course. You can put those in anywhere you want. It's going up and back down. Now I'm still playing that same chord, the fifths and the fifths and the F sharp on top. Now what's kind of neat is, because we've got dividers on all the tracks, we can take track number two that's transposing things, go menu divider, and set this to be time base one. And what that will do is run track two 16 times slower than the others, so it'll go through much slower and transpose every measure instead of every step. So I'm going to have no transposition, no, 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 up a half step and back down. No transposition, up a third, flat third, and then back down. So when we watch this one play, we'll see the LEDs go a lot slower. And I'm going to turn off all but the bass drum in this polyphonic sequence. So we'll start playing it. Now with the fifth measure, we're transposing up a whole step and back down. Now we're on the ninth measure. Here comes the thirteenth measure. If we watch track one play, the LED is going to go nice and fast playing 16th notes. If I switch to the visuals of track number two, we see it just plodding along one step per measure. I bring the bass back on. Now you can hear that the bass isn't being transposed, but we can go down to track number four, which is our bass track. Go menu, mode, choose transpose, and now the bass track is also picking up from bus one the transposition notes that track two is spitting out. And we can at any time go back to track number two, which is playing those transpositions, and change
or if you want to take some out, just ungate them so they don't play. Now if we want to get really interesting, we could take this transposition track and change its length. Actually, let's make the transmissions come a little faster. And let's change the length of the transposition track to five steps. So there's the C, second time, then a D, and down to the B, up to the D. We could also do the same thing with the bass. Change the length of the bass line to 15. Really mess things up. Change it back to 16. Go back to our transposition track. Change it back to 16. And we can always go into the. Uh, let's get some rid of some of these crazy. We can always go back to number one, the track with the chord in it. If we go to parameter C, and we can look at the different notes we have, we can take that top note, which is an F sharp. And hold on the all button. Eh, I still haven't figured out the all button. I thought I'd change them all, but. Oh, maybe I need to press them. Anyway, that's something that you can do with your MIDI box sequencer. Thank you. 